The impeachment inquiry Trump whistleblower saga continues. Today, a former State Department official named in some of the stories is testifying behind closed doors up on Capitol Hill, and the president is suggesting that China also investigate one of his rivals. Did the president already ask China to do it? We'll see. Keep checking thehill.com for more up to the minute details. Now on our docket today, Planned Parenthood heads to the border. It's not all snakes and alligators. Some of this stuff is serious. Pizza with a scotch back is gonna cost you. I'm Jamal Simmons. This is why you should care. Missouri has the most restrictive abortion laws in the country, but Planned Parenthood of Missouri's St. Louis region is showing the Show Me State their organization won't stop providing health care services to women. In an announcement Tuesday, the organization revealed it will open an even bigger clinic in Fairview Heights, Illinois, just 15 miles from the Missouri border. In the statement, Dr. Colleen McNicholas, who oversees the only abortion provider left in Missouri, said that despite Missouri's efforts to block them from providing abortion services, they will push back no matter what. The 18,000 square foot facility is set to open in mid-October. Why should you care? The battle between pro-choice and pro-life forces is ongoing. But in the last year, the push to ban Planned Parenthood and other abortion providers has escalated. In Missouri, Planned Parenthood was denied a license renewal, and lawmakers drafted legislation that would ban abortion at eight weeks, and sometimes at six. For those who violate it, they might face jail time. Eight other states passed laws in 2019 alone. Some passed so-called heartbeat bills, which would prohibit abortions at six weeks, which is around the time doctors can hear the fetal heartbeat. The woman's right to choose was established in the Supreme Court in 1973, but Republicans have been successful appointing and confirming so many conservative judges, this could mean even less protection for abortion rights, and potentially set up a challenge to Roe v. Wade. Supreme Court justices are lining up the cases they will review this coming year, and two of them are abortion cases, one out of Indiana and another out of Louisiana. So far, the Supreme Court has stayed away from a direct challenge to Roe v. Wade, but conservatives will keep pushing the issue. Yesterday, we poked fun at President Trump's suggestion to build a moat filled with alligators and snakes at the U.S.-Mexico border. But the Trump administration has been making a few moves on immigration we should talk about seriously. Yesterday, the New York Times reported the Trump administration is planning to collect DNA from hundreds of thousands of migrants held at the border each year and enter it into a national criminal database. 40,000 people being held right now. This in efforts to enforce the country's immigration laws. While collecting immigrant DNA is not a new idea, advocates argue that it violates the privacy of an already vulnerable population, and that kind of mass collection, it could become more of a population surveillance system than one meant to monitor criminal activity. That's not the only thing on the immigration front. A joint investigation by PBS and AP News found the Trump administration is shifting to privatizing child detention centers. According to the report, former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly joined the board of a company owned by one of the only privatized child detention centers so far, CHS. Kelly is said to have backed the child separation policy the White House enacted at the border, which caused the increased flood of children at detainee centers and resulted in the federal government losing the ability to return some children to their parents. Critics are concerned about these companies profiteering off of child migrants. Here's why you should care. Immigration is a huge issue in our country. People of goodwill will disagree, but most recognize America needs new policies to address the questions. While the impeachment inquiry gets started and the president puts more tweets out than the Kardashians post Instagram photos, it's important to keep focused on serious issues. When it comes to what's happening at the border, this isn't fake news, folks. It's real AF. Okay, this story is important. Real talk, we gotta do something about this. You know what I'm talking about. Single malt scotch whiskey, Lafroy, Glenlivet, Oban. The Trump administration is in another battle in its global trade war, and this time, scotch whiskey is gonna take the hit. You know what else could end up costing more? Pizza! The U.S. Trade Representative's office is slapping a 25% tariff on scotch and also on Italian cheeses like provolone, parmesan, ricotta, and mozzarella. 
The main cheeses and pizza, lasagna, and that Italian sub you might like. The fight is mostly over airplanes. Back in 2004, the United States took the European Union to the World Trade Organization for subsidizing Airbus, which is the main competitor to Boeing. They sell airplanes to companies like Delta, United, and American Airlines. The WTO this week authorized the Trump administration to put $7.5 billion in tariffs on the Europeans in response, and there was a whole list of things that got included. Airbus will also face a 10% levy itself, making those planes much more expensive. Here's why you should care. Look, if you're a bourbon drinker, you might be thinking, hey, what does it matter? Nobody's taxing my sweet, sultry glass of Tennessee whiskey. But for those single malt people out there, you know who you are. The joy of a nice, peaty scotch. Maybe one ice cube, maybe a glass of water on the side. This whole thing could stink. And then there's pizza. It might be created by Italians, but there's really nothing more American than pizza. Seriously. A lot of government shenanigans don't hurt the average American. Increasing the cost of pizza? That's something nobody will enjoy. Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos. And head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.